Hello Pokemon fans, Professor Rex here, and welcome back to another episode of Shiny Hunter Math. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Salacion Ruins Unknown. For those of you who don't know, I've recently started a quest to collect the entire alphabet of Shiny Unknown and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and I thought we could take this opportunity to talk a little bit about how many encounters or how many phases we could expect to do in order to finish a quest like that. The first thing we need to know in order to tackle such a question is how the encounters in the Salacion Ruins actually work. There's three different types of rooms in the Salacion Ruins. We have dead end rooms, which spawn 20 different unknown. All of the letters of the alphabet, except for the letters of the word friend. In the dead end rooms, each unknown has a 5% chance to spawn, and they're equally likely to show up. The next type of room are these hallways. In the hallways, only one letter of the word friend will spawn per hallway. That letter has a 100% chance to spawn when you uh, encounter a Pokemon. And finally, we have the punctuation rooms. The punctuation rooms are unlocked once you've collected all other 26 letters of the alphabet and they spawn the question mark and the excla exclamation point unknown, both with a 50% chance probability. So the question of today's video is how many unknown would be, we be expected to see to catch one of each? First, we have the dead end rooms, the rooms with 20 unknown. These rooms actually bear a striking resemblance to the coupon collector's problem. In probability theory, the coupon collector's problem describes a coupon collecting contest where coupon collectors need to collect an entire set of unique coupons in order to win a prize. The coupon collector's problem investigates how many magazines a coupon collector might be expected to need to buy in order to collect all of the unique coupons in a set and win their prize. We're going to delve into this question a little bit later once we understand a little bit more about the probability in encountering different unknowns. Next we have the hallway rooms. Each hallway only spawns one unique unknown, so it'll only take one encounter to find all of the unknown in each room. Finally we have the punctuation room. This is the first room we're going to talk about in a little bit more detail. The punctuation room has two equiprobable outcomes per encounter. There's a 50% chance of getting an exclamation point unknown and a 50% chance of getting a question mark unknown. In our first encounter in the punctuation room, we're guaranteed to encounter a new unknown. Therefore, the expected number of encounters to collect at least one unique unknown in the punctuation room is one. Once we found our first unknown, there's only a probability of 50% to find a new one on the next encounter. So, for all future encounters until we find a new unknown, we can let our probability of finding a new unknown equal 1 over 2. The next encounters after finding our first unknown can actually be looked at as Bernoulli trials. In probability theory, a Bernoulli trial is an experiment with two possible outcomes. Either you get a success, or you get a failure. In the case of encountering unknowns, a success would be finding an unknown we haven't encountered before, and a failure would be finding a duplicate. The expected number of trials needed to get one success in a set of Bernoulli trials is equal to 1 over p. Since our probability, or p, probability of encountering a new unknown is 1 over 2, then the expected number of trials to find a second unique unknown is equal to the inverse of p, or 2 over 1, or 2, 2 encounters. Our total, therefore, our total expected encounters in the probability room needed to find both of the unknown is equal to 3. So we can now take this 
rationale this understanding of probability and apply it to the dead end rooms. The dead end rooms have 20 unique unknown, each with a 5% probability to spawn. In our first encounter, just like in the unknown room, we have a 100% chance to find a new unknown. However, in our second encounter, we have a 19 in 20 chance to find a new unknown. This is because there's always that 1 in 20 chance of finding a dupe. In this case, the probability of success for our Bernoulli trials is 19 over 20. We can take this probability and know that the expected number of encounters to find a second unknown is equal to the inverse of 19 over 20, or about 1.05 encounters. We can look at this probability and observe that the probability of success is equal to n minus i plus 1 over n, where n is equal to the total number of unknown that we need to collect, i is equal to the number of unique unknown we will have found after success, and if we take a look at this formula in regards to finding our second unknown, we can take a look and say, see that n equals 20, 20 minus i being 2 plus 1 equals 19, giving us 19 over 20, which is the same probability we had calculated earlier. Knowing that the probability of finding our ith unique unknown is equal to this formula here on any given encounter, then we know that the expected number of encounters needed to find our ith unknown is equal to the inverse of that, being n over n minus i plus 1. To calculate the total number of expected unknown encounters that would be needed to find at least one of each unknown in the dead end rooms, we add up the expected number of encounters for each step, from i being 1 all the way up to i being 20, 20 being our 20th unique unknown. We can write this as a summation formula using sigma notation. This fancy looking e is sigma and it means we're going to start where i equals 1 and add up the result of this formula going from i equals 1 all the way up to i equaling n. For the unknown room we would start at i equals 1 and go until n equals 20. We can write this out bit by bit by bit, adding up each probability for each um, new unknown until we finally calculate the expected number of encounters we would need to do to find all 20 unique unknown at least once. In this room, the, in this case, the dead end room would take an average of 71.95 encounters in order to find at least one of each. But what if we already have some of the unknown in the dead end room? In my shiny hunting unknown hunt quest, I've already found 12 of the unique unknown in the dead end room. So how can I calculate how many unknown, or sorry, how many encounters I have left on average before I finish my quest? It's pretty easy. Instead of starting our eye at one, we just start our i at the number of unknown we already have, plus 1, because that'll be the number of unique unknown we'll have after we successfully uh, find a new one. So with 12, we add 1, and we start our i at 13. We can rewrite our summation and go from i equals 13 to i equals 20, adding them all up, and I can see that with 12 unique unknown so far, I can expect to do about 54 more encounters. Now an interesting note I want to make about this formula here is it is actually the standard formula you can use to solve any um, coupon collector-esque problem. So if we wanted to know how many uh, magazines we would need to buy to collect 30 unique coupons, all we do is we sub 30 in for n. 
And there we go. So if you in the future come across something that feels like it's a coupon collector problem, you can take a look at this equation um, and find an answer. If you don't want to do the summation all by hand, there's plenty of summation calculators you can actually find online. Just type summation calculator into Google and you'll find what you need. So finally, how many encounters can we expect to do in order to find at least one of each available unknown in the Salacion Ruins? We just need to add up the total expected encounters per room. There's six different hallways, each containing one letter of the word friend, so we can expect to do six encounters. In the punctuation room, we calculated that we are expected to do about three encounters, so we add that in. And the dead end rooms, we calculated an expected 72 encounters. Adding that all up, if you just wanted to finish your unknown alphabet, you could expect to do about 81 encounters total. But what if we wanted to find them all in their shiny form? Well, we just change those encounters into shiny phases, so we can expect to do about 81 phases across the entire quest, and we multiply that by how many encounters we would expect to do per phase. In Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, we would expect to do about 4,096 encounters per phase, giving us an expected 331,500 encounters in order to complete the full shiny alphabet. In Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, you would just double that because the odds are double. Thank you guys so much for sticking through today's shiny hunter math video hopefully you're able to learn something if you have any questions feel free to drop a comment in the youtube comment section below or hop into the discord the link's going to be in the description if you were watching this video and you thought wow i could take what we were learning today and apply it to something else be it pokemon related or not i would actually love to hear about it that's kind of what the whole goal of these videos are but either way Happy hunting, good shiny luck, and thank you guys so much for sticking around. Bye!